So over at OS Dev, as usual, they are pissing me off by misunderstanding my code. They have said, it won't boot, it can't boot, there's no way it boots. It's been booting since I started 93. Anyway, so this is basically, they, they're trying to start my kernel. I'm, I'm assuming they're talking to me and they're trying to start my kernel without doing it the correct way, okay? Um, let's just go through this because it's pretty easy. You go to my website, you download the ISO file, Okay, once you have the ISO file, you make a new virtual machine, typical. You select the ISO image. You go to downloads. You say, there's the ISO, it's in my downloads directory. There's the ISO file. It's an other 64-bit. I call this production. There's my in-house and there's production. Eight gigabytes for the hard drive is enough. You you do have to customize the hardware. You need 512 meg or more. I put it at five just to show that it's bigger than 32-bit. And I give it eight cores. You have, they have to be real cores. And then we're finished. I should have removed networking because it doesn't use the network. Okay, so for some reason... Those sons of bitches cannot do, there are, everybody else, you hit yes, yes, yes. If you're in a virtual machine, hit yes, yes, yes. And that's all there is to it. Um, for some reason, they want to boot it uh, in box or whatever that debugger thing is. Um, they can't follow simple instructions. Box is some kind of cluster fucked thing full of bugs. They, none of them, I, mine has been 64 bits since 2007. The, the, they expect me to debug box for them. I'm not going to debug your stupid, your thing doesn't matter. Anyway, so we reboot. There you go. Now you have an installed version of my operating system. Um, so, and it has all the, it has all the source code. All the source code is present. Hit control D. This is the file manager. There's the, the kernel is here. The compiler is here. If you want to rebuild, then you say make OS install boot. It has to, um, my bootloader is super simple. It requires a contiguous kernel.bin and it requires it to be in a certain spot. It, it, um, when you install, then it writes to the kernel dot, it writes the, the address of the kernel dot bit. Let's look at the code. This is my, I have an install script. You saw it run. That's how a professional operating system works, is it has an install script. Um, you seem to, you, you seem to want to do it custom. You want to mess with my kernel dot bin. That's not how you do it. Um, so this calls make all, which compiles the two modules. This is my own compiler. And then after it compiles, if it's a if it's a CD-ROM, it does one thing. If it's a um, hard disk, it does another. Um, that what it does is it writes to the um, it uses interrupt 1342 uh, in the boot in the boot sector, and there's a DAP. Um, that's that's an address of a block, and what it does is it writes to the the DAP in the uh, it writes to the the first block of the sector, which is the boot sector. It reads it, it reads it, modifies and writes it. There, there it reads it, modifies and writes it. So what is it? What does it write? It writes the uh, the address of the kernel, the, the kernel dot bin. Find file kernel dot bin, and what that does is it gets the directory entry with the cluster number, and then it writes it into the kernel dot bin. So when we when we recompile. This will build the kernel in the compiler. Okay, what is the current drive? This, has, this is going to be the C drive. 
and what we you have to mount drives um, at at boot time. So we're going to mount the C and D drives at boot. We want to probe now, and it's a hard disk. Now it, we say number one. You could enter port numbers if it's say to good enough. Enter. We want the default cache size is fine. Hit enter. If you want, you can change some options. We're going to leave those alone. Enter. There. Now we just recompiled the kernel and the compiler, and we wrote to the boot sector the uh, the uh, new kernel dot bin address. Now we reboot. This is my this is my master bootloader. I don't use Grub. I don't use Grub. I have my own bootloader. I'm all professional. Hit one. There we are. We we booted um, the C drive. Uh, so um, let's go into detail on what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I have my Temple OS and production. I'm going to delete that off my disk. Now let's go to this and. Uh, what was I doing? Customize. Okay. Okay, now we just screwed up our size a little bit. Okay, so uh, we hit, we're going full screen. Um, there's a bug in VMware. You have to do auto fit and then stretch. Every time you do it, you have to do that. Um, but the disk is five times faster than QEMU. So um, let's let's go into detail on what we just did. So we we have a boot a bootloader um, that it writes to the boot sector. So uh, this is the hard this is this is the master bootloader. That's like Grub, and then this is the uh, I think they call it the volume bootloader. I don't know what you call it. It goes on the first block of the partition. What does it do? It has the uh, DAP, DAP is what um, if we if we go to the uh, internet and look up interrupt thirteen interrupt thirteen forty two, that's the one you use for big hard disks. If you have a hard disk that you bought in the last ten years, you want forty two. At OS Dev, they're retarded. They're evil. They make them. They make the poor kids uh, do um, sector head cylinder arithmetic. They're they're fucking evil. They're, they're sabotaging them. None of that shit. Yet there hasn't been a hard disk that small in 10 years. And it's even harder. It's easier to use a DAP. You should tell the... God, they are wicked fuckers. The OS dev CIA evil fuckers making the poor kids use cylinder head sector. You want to use interrupt 42. And if Box doesn't do it, then get the hell out of Box. That's that's the evil. They, they, they sabotage wicked fuckers. Anyway, they're making all the poor kids. Oh well, they're making them all reinvent Linux and stuff. So I'm kind of wicked. I relocate my uh, bootloader for no particular reason. So what I do is I, uh, um, if you look at a memory map of the 640, um, there's seven C zero zero, and then way up here is uh, is. Uh, well, 640 means 10 times 64, so that's how you get 640, 1040. Um, just underneath that is the. Uh, I, I discovered the hard way. There's the. Uh, there's there's a data area called the extended data area underneath there. So um, just to be safe, I I put my stack at eight eighty thousand. Is this I sometimes. I put my stack at 80,000. Um, that's normal. I don't know why. I like to view it as one big chunk. And as a matter of fact, um, just because kind of, I'm kind of evil, I relocate my boot sector up to up to just under 80,000. And then I load my kernel in at 7. There's no real reason to do that. I could... 
leave my boot sector at seven and put my kernel afterward. But I it just it just made more sense to me when I did it. And actually, I started with DOS. Uh, it was loaded by DOS, and so that's it. It made a little more sense anyway. Um, so I can tell if anybody has used my bootloader because they do the the relocation so I'm kind of happy with it I'm not really you know I'm not in the business to help you make an operating system that's not my business I'm in the business to have you use Temple OS I don't want you using it I don't really care that much I'm not gonna but so I don't care I kind of this is kind of evil obfuscation that I relocate you can tell where it came from if they if they copy me um, which is kind of wicked so anyway so uh, I load one block at a time there's only one thing that matters in operating systems and that's getting it to boot to to run efficiency doesn't is, is the la least of your worries so I load one block at a time um, if you want to try and load 64k it's gonna fuck up on one out of ten BIOSes and you were stupid because it's that's not gonna what's gonna matter is if it doesn't work and so I don't use interrupts for my hard disk because that's one more thing that's not gonna work one out of ten is not gonna use the right interrupt number did you know that um even these motherfuckers uh, watch this let me demonstrate something to you okay um, this is the CIA shit that I'm talking about watch this uh, let's let's turn this off well let's just let's make two virtual machines okay so new virtual machine I'm gonna do this real fast um, okay so we're just gonna hit enter enter uh, I, I, let's call this production I'll do it twice in a row see what happens okay so we kick it up to into the five and eight okay finish okay let's just leave it like this for a second I'm gonna power off okay power off go in here edit machine settings okay go to the hard disk and uh, advanced IDE 1 1 why did you put it on there's IDE 0 there's IDE 0 0 1 1 I, I'm not kidding these motherfuckers play musical chairs with the fucking disks they put the hard disk on okay let's see that 1 0 1 1 they did this just to fuck with uh, operating systems um, they don't want the CIA doesn't want anybody from China or India making an operating system okay now if, let's do another one okay let's get rid of this one did you see that one which was which uh, there's no reason for musical chairs on the fucking they probably say viruses god damn you motherfuckers um, th this is the shit this is the, this is only the beginning this this you can actually solve the other shit you can't solve um, okay so we got uh, one one zero the hard disk is one one okay let's let's close this these motherfuckers so we delete this do you know how you have to figure it out you have to you have to test the hardware and say okay is my CD-ROM boot sector here no then it's not the right drive um, you have to it's you know a, a hardware or a, a, an engineer knows correct protocol and doing something like comparing the block is not what it should be but that's the only way to do it um, so uh, in other words you have to compare the block on the disk to what got loaded in memory okay I'm gonna do another one so we're gonna do
so we do this is, I'm, I'm doing the same thing same thing I guess it's a different uh, memory a little bit I'm trying to make it as similar as possible and watch what they do I'm pretty sure I haven't tested this but I could swear that they uh, they play musical chairs they do I know they do okay I could be wrong but let's see let's see what they did I'm good um, So we go to the hard disk, advanced. Okay, they did not play musical chairs. Um, sometimes they do. Let's see if uh, why why is it why didn't you put one on? I can handle the drives in any position. Uh, so um, what about this one? This is my other drive. Maybe it's if you have uh, multiple ones installed. Let's see what we have here. Okay, they're the same. It's, it's, it's a weird thing to be starting with the secondary. Why is it starting with the secondary? Uh, trust me, I have seen different settings for that for no reason. Why? It should be the, the hard disk should be the master on the primary, and the CD ROM should be on the other controller. It doesn't really matter for uh, a fake hard drive, but they have good performance, by the way. But it should be separate controllers, because now you have anyway. So uh, we can, I guess, we can change it, can't we? Well, anyway, I don't. Yeah, they'll say, "Oh, well, you can change it." Yeah, but think about my poor customers. The little motherfuckers can't even figure out how to how to do what I just did. Um, you can't. Any little question you have to ask your customers, that's like 50% drop in sales. I mean, <laughs> they are simply not going to get through that question. Um, if you had to tell people to set that, that would be terrible. As a matter of fact, if you boot a, uh, a uh, um, uh, on, on native hardware, um, there's something called, uh, I wish I could show you this, uh, you're what you're supposed to do so in the original um, IBM PC there was uh, IDE primary IDE secondary there it was there were there were two sets of ports and that that was the end of the story but then they they introduced uh, then they started doing SATA if you do uh, if you go to the command prompt in Linux and you say LS uh, PCI minus L. Okay. If you say LS PCI minus, uh, I think, I don't know, LS PCI, LS PCI. Um, this tells SATA ports, SATA controller. Um, in, in Windows, it's in your, um, your somewhere in here, um, it'll give port addresses. Um, I, I don't know, maybe you have to say minus, minus V for minus V, I, okay, LS, LS, PCI, minus V. Okay, so somewhere in here is SATA ports. That's your hard disk or your CD-ROM. And then here's the sets of ports. So I have a computer sitting on the other side of my room. I can show you, and it boots natively. And I have to enter, I have to enter F010 because that's the port. Um, so they're not using primary and um, primary and mass and secondary IDE. They're using SATA ports with. Uh, so how are you supposed to find that out? Well, um, there's a device called there's a chip called a. Uh, oh, I I don't I'm not. I don't really bother to. There, okay, there's your CPU, and then there's support chips, and sometimes they merge these together. I guess I don't really know. Um, I, it's not important to me. But there's a there's a chip. No, I don't feel like that. So there's an there's a there's a chip that does your. Uh, your I.O. I'll go ahead and I'll go to my own. So you can look for ICH10. So you get the one that's for your computer. 
every couple years they make a new one and yes they are different think about that that's that's fucked there it's okay they have to do it but it's that's why there's only one thing that matters in operating systems and that's getting it to work um, and uh, the people who haven't figured that out uh, let's see I see I have a course core i7 so I don't use interrupts because it makes it work years so there's uh there's ICH six seven eight nine every couple of years they make a new one and they're all slightly different just think of the nightmare so here's SATA okay this is as a matter of fact uh, primary command block address these are the I/O ports for the uh, so uh, how do we figure out okay so PCI devices are uh, arranged into uh, families, devices, and functions or something. I don't support PCI devices. I, I, uh, that's where I figured out, you know what, we just crossed a bridge, <laughs> bridge too far. Anyway, so uh, PCI device, these, I, I, I have a little bit of, there's, Normally the, the BIOS is 16-bit, but there's a PCI BIOS, which if you go to the internet, if you go to the internet, nobody knows this, and they all call me a liar, and they start saying my operating system is 16-bit. Son of a bitch. I, you know, the only good thing, I learned a couple good things from OS Dev. I learned about the PCI BIOS from OS Dev. PCI BIOS specification. What this is, is a 32-bit library that will get you information that will read the PCI config space. What the con On the first computer I had, you could, I found the config space in memory. Then they started putting it so it was off limits, so you couldn't access it. At first I thought it was just memory locations. But anyway, so the way you're supposed to access the PCI config space that's this, uh, you see these uh, these registers? This is PCI config space. It's, um, I, they probably, when, when you call the BIOS, it probably um, makes it, normally it's, it's invisible, it's not part of add memory space. I think this maps it, or this flips a, 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 a flip-flop and turns it into a um, memory space. So what? So if we want to do this right, let's say we want to get the SATA ports. Um, it turns out that say, uh, the port interface is kind of uh, old-fashioned. They're not going to do that anymore. Um, but as soon as we kick the shit out of them with divine commandments, they are going to do shit like that. But anyway, uh, so for 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 uh for the first for the first decade of the IBM PC the the hard disk was at IDE primary or IDE secondary and then starting at about 2000 they started doing SATA at other uh, it's the same arrangement of ports but they're just not at the the standard locations and then they stopped doing ports altogether and you have to you have to do the interface with PCI anyway so uh um, I tried to do it the correct way. So what is the correct way? Well, you use the, uh, the PCI BIOS to, enter, to, to go to these registers. So first of all, there are this many devices. So what do you have to do? You have to scan for... Um, no, that's not what you do. You, you tell the... Uh, you call the PCI BIOS to find the device category, the device class. Okay, well this shouldn't be too hard. We go to uh, SATA, let's see, um, subclass code, class code. Okay, so it's, it's listed in this documentation. And uh, if we go to the PCI BIOS, but guess what? Guess what? These are cluster fucked. Uh, in practice, nobody follows 
So there's this website that tells um, PCI device classes. So we want we want the uh, we want to tell the PCI BIOS to give us a mass storage device SATA. So we want 0106. So we want to tell the PCI PCI BIOS 0106. But it goes deeper. There's one more level, I do believe, um, and that's where that's where it's cluster fucked. You have to just you have to scan all 256. You have to individually scan 256. It's the it's not standard. Not only that, but sometimes it's not called. Sometimes it's called ADA. Sometimes it's called SATA, and sometimes it's called IDE. Um, so for we have to scan all of those, and uh, so. Right. Now, uh, how do we? Uh, so this is for uh, um, so the PCI spec. Well, the, so there are different chips, and you have to find out which chip you have, and then scan the the registers. Because what if uh, the, the I think the so the the PCI gives you the first you use the class code you scan 256 256 256 different codes you're looking for um, SATA devices you have to you have to test them all and uh, it's it they couldn't have designed it any worse anyway so um, long story short I made a uh, you know, I won't say I tried as hard as possible. If I were going to try as hard as possible, I would go through all the ICH six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I only did ICH. I, I only paid attention to ICH ten. But if you go to my kernel in the block device directory under ATA ID, here's where I try to uh, determine the uh, the port numbers. Okay, first um, I have to identify which one is the CD-ROM and which one is the hard drive. So a TAPI is hard drive, and I have to compare against the disk block of a known of what I booted to, because they don't tell you which one it is. So you have to compare against a boot, and so I I do the I do the standard addresses, and other otherwise I try to use my PCI. Uh, Okay, so I uh, I try to ident I think I say control eighty eighty six. Okay, no, I didn't do that. Okay, so uh, PCI class find. So I'm I'm in, I'm asking the PCI BIOS for a certain class. I'm going through two hundred and fifty six subclasses, and uh, apparently I read the uh, the two ports. And the other two ports, and I test them all with the. This is really you'd call this African ingenuity. You don't really want to be doing this. Um, the, there's there's got to be a right way to do this, um, but actually there's not a right way. It really is that bad. Um, that's the first. You know, people with would turn their nose up at this techniques like this probing. Come on. You don't want to be probing like this. There probably is a right way, but it's probably ten pages, and I don't know where it is. Um, anyway, so it's it, now think about this. What we really need is the. Well, here's what you need a king. You need a king to kick the shit out of the evil CIA. Here's the new world order. The the mass the. The primary hard disk goes on the IDE master, uh, IDE primary master. The the primary CD-ROM goes on the IDE secondary master, and that's the end of the story. Do not relocate them. Put them in the fucking consistent place, like it used to be, except even more standard. So, um, so I had I was really happy with myself. I had the PCI BIOS working when I went to a um, on on native hardware. When I went to uh, 
a certain class code. Then, then I tried another machine, and it's a different. It, one was IDE, and, and then there's VMware. This tells a, a totally different PCI rep. So what is this saying? This is saying uh, my PCI rep is saying uh, I think AHCI or something. What are we looking for? Uh, SATA. I did this report with a uh, file. I, I went to the website and got a list of all the different, um, all the code words. You have to read, excuse me, you have to register a um, PCI device with a, um, a central authority. And I got the list of registered. Um, you can see that file, it's huge. Um, companies have to uh, register their PCI devices. And uh, so one of these things is, uh, I don't even know, SCSI, that sounds like, uh, that's a that's a CD-ROM. It's not SCSI. It's definitely not SCSI. Or that's a hard disk. So the PCI has bridges, and it has, uh, it has buses. This is bus number two. Bus family device. And then register um, bus, not register. Anyway, uh, oh, these are these are the cat these are the codes I print out in this. You see that six? That's like an ATA number eighty. That's what these numbers are. Are the codes something like that? Three SVGA. Anyway, so uh, so when I am king, I'm gonna kick the shit out of the industry, and we're gonna standardize this shit. And we are gonna. Here's the new world. The new world order. We make the hardware so that Temple OS is glorious and minimal. We make the hardware to make Temple OS glorious. That's what we do. That's the new world order. Anyway, so. Um, so it used to be that the PCI was in. I had a I had a machine where you didn't even have to use the PCI BIOS. You just went to some addresses in memory, and it gave you the. Uh, but no, no, they weren't happy with that. They they couldn't have it so simple. So they had to make this PCI BIOS thing. So I have to I have to downshift out of 64-bit into 32-bit. Do a. Uh, I have to turn off interrupts and stuff. I have to do 32-bit BIOS, which is kind of slow. I think, uh, and then I have to scan 256 uh, different class codes. All because they couldn't put it in a standard spot. You know what? Uh, you know what you need? You need a king. You need a fucking king. People, some people have two spaces for tabs. Some people have four spaces for tabs. Guess what? A tab is eight spaces. A tab is fucking eight spaces. That took eight columns. I'll bet you didn't know that. Well, that's what it is. You need a fucking king. That's what you need. The industry needs a king to kick the shit out of all this flexibility. You know what? Syntax highlighting. You know what syntax highlighting looks like? I'll tell you what syntax highlighting looks like. This is what syntax highlighting looks like. Is there flexibility? No, there's not flexibility. Fuck you. Actually, you, if you really did want to change the syntax highlighting, I don't. You have to recompile the kernel. Um, let's look for. Uh, but you know, when I first started, I made all the colors changeable. <laughs> that makes me giggle. Um, so if you want to change the syntax highlighting, you change it here. But uh, don't do that. You need a king. That's that's what Apple teaches. I I, I never used an Apple, but um, they have a lot of common sense. You, you get rid of some of this flexibility because it's actually evil. You know, somebody wants a different color scheme. No, you're not. No, <laughs> no, we're we're not going to allow that.
anyway so uh, you know one of my one of, on my first on my Ticketmaster job I had a uh, I had a uh, I was making a line regulator which uh, is a device that um, if the wall voltage is lower than it should be it up transforms it by selecting a tap on a transformer and uh, when I made it I said oh well we'll put a potentiometer to set the voltage and my boss is like uh, no get rid of the potentiometer I'm like what <laughs> uh, and that's where I learned uh, um, it's uh, you could call it cowardly you could call it anything you like but if you the more uh, adjustments the worse design um, that's kind of uh, that's you might think power users power users might like adjustments like colors and stuff but uh, I think um, you know when I when I made this uh, this if you look at, at the internet <coughs> I don't even know if I can boot any of the CIA made um, I don't know I think they did um, if you go to the internet internet archive the internet archive is no longer cataloging me because I put source code the internet archive and uh, all the snapshots they got over the years uh, most are not bootable um, when I first made my operating system I said tell me the primary IDE tell me the CD-ROM port and the and the hard disk port and uh, it took a lot of work to uh, it's really easy if you just ask what's the hard disk port what's the CD-ROM port um, but it took a lot of work a lot of work to to make it figure that out automatically and it, it doesn't it doesn't look like much but if you can get rid of one prompt during installation that is a huge achievement if you can get rid of one prompt during installation that's a big achievement you know all the computers if they could figure out the uh, the time zone I don't know that's an example anyway uh, um, so uh, yeah when when I first on my first versions all I did is I had a I just simply ask what's the CD-ROM port and what's the, uh, the hard disk port there's some wisdom people were thinking it was a um, a, uh, a registration uh, like a, uh, a product key and when I when I realized what they were thinking it was oh wow there are so many things you, you can't see through other people's eyes if they see a prompt for port numbers they're thinking it's a it's a paid product key um, and uh, I have a few, you know what um, I need to upgrade I need to get a new computer I, I have an excuse it's actually important for my job although it's gonna be hopeless on um, I don't do uh, I, I decided I'm not doing USB devices I'm or PCI devices I'm not going to do USB either um, so um, all these devices fuck all that I'm not doing that I'm sticking to um, IO port devices and so uh, if I get a new computer and it has a, a SSD hard drive there's it, it wouldn't it would there, there's there's no driver for US, USB and uh, but there but VMware will make it look like uh, um, an IDE or ATA whatever you want to call it um, someone told me that I'm, I'm pretty confident that's true so um, but you know that running it in a VM t makes the glory of an operating system look like a dumb re dumb retarded application anyway uh, so uh, I want to get a new computer and uh, I heard Linux uh, if it has um, if it doesn't have a CD-ROM there's like a 12-step process let me just tell you um, you know how some things cause birth control well um, this uh, uh, how do we say this uh, uh, 
Ubuntu uh, Flash or uh, Ubuntu. They used to be called Flash. They've been confusing everybody on purpose. Um, SSD stick boot uh, install. So I, I I was tempted to get a new. I just took for granted. Oh well, I'll just install Linux. But suddenly it's looking like an ordeal even for me if it's if it's intimidating to install Linux because it doesn't have a CD-ROM look at this this stuff oh where is it installing Ubuntu onto a solid-state drive I, I think what am I looking for I'm looking for a from a yeah if you don't have a CD-ROM uh, from SSD um, let me just tell you uh, you can make a jail that has no walls and the CIA knows all about that and what what that means is if you can make it you know maybe it's three steps normally and if you can make it 12 steps you you just eliminated 75 percent of the customers um, um, maybe everything in Linux is always screwed up I'm not that used to it um, Keep portable Ubuntu. Okay, well, I think this is a, a live CD idea. Oh, they love that. The CIA wants everybody to have a wristwatch computer instead of a desktop. But when I get through with them, we're going to have fucking supercomputers. Everybody, because if only one person has a supercomputer and he writes software, nobody can use it. So everybody has to have a fucking supercomputer. And that's what we're going to do to the industry with the help of God. So somewhere in here it tells how to put a, uh, to install. Okay, so if I get a new computer and I want to put Linux on it, I have to copy to a USB stick from, from this computer and then, uh, and then install from a USB stick. Uh, and, um, I went looking for it. How can I transfer Ubuntu from a stick to a new? Okay. I swear it was like a 12 step process. And if it's 12 steps, I, I really don't think very many people are doing it. It's like birth control. Uh, if you make car seats and uh, if you make children a big enough hassle, that causes birth control. And if you make a big enough hassle to install Linux you can kill Linux by just making it 12 steps and uh, so I'm gonna command the industry to quit don't even think about tiny desktops the the virtue of a portable is smallness the virtue of a desktop is powerful you want powerful you're it's like you're confi you're confusing what your strength and weakness is the, the CIA is making the desktop think it wants to be small. No, you're, it's like a man who thinks he wants to be tiny. No, men should be big. And a desktop should be big. It's powerful. And you got them all confused, gender confused. You got tiny desktops. What? Why are you making... Nobody gives a shit about a calculator-sized desktop. No, that doesn't really do anything. I got a fucking floor space. I got... I want a... I want a monster computer. And they got rid of the CD-ROM. They don't like that. They want everything in the cloud where it's under lock and key. The little motherfuckers. We're going to kick the shit out of them. God and I are going to kick the shit out of the CIA. We're going to fuck them up. We are going to fuck them up.
so anyway <clears throat> they got everybody wanting wristwatch desktops why the fuck would you want a wristwatch desktop the virtue of a desktop is power big big screen full keyboard big mouse power horsepower you don't make a pussy desktop what the you evil motherfuckers you got these poor confused little stupid kids wanting a tiny desktop what the hell are you doing and it, here's the problem if you make a tiny if you make a Celeron then suddenly little Timmy's game that worked on his i7 doesn't run on his neighbor's Celeron so you gotta have everybody with powerful desktops all desktops must have eight cores we're, we're gonna standardize this shit that's what we're gonna do